All right, we're going to show you how to load Showrunner. Uh, with every Showrunner delivery, there will be a link to Chief Integration's file site. We're going to go ahead and launch that link. Contained on the file site are all the files necessary to load and get going with Showrunner. We're going to go ahead and check them all and hit Download All Files. Go ahead and save this to wherever you'd like on your computer. In this case, I've already downloaded it and saved it to our desktop here. So this is the zip file that would have been downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and do an extract all here. Feel free to use your own zip tool if you don't like this one. Then we're going to go ahead and go into the folder here, and we've got a puff file. The puff file is a Crestron puff format. Uh, it uses Toolbox uh, to load and uh, load all the necessary files. If you don't have Toolbox already on your system, uh, please go to Crestron's website and download it. Uh, that's all you'll need to get this up and running. Uh, come back here after that's done. At this point, we're going to launch the Puff. Now, the Puff screen is going to ask us for a device to connect to. If you already have an address book, feel free to uh, select that uh, here. But I'm going to go ahead and use a direct IP connection. In this case, our DIN AP3 is at 10.44.5.80. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. If uh, we've seen this occasionally, we don't know what causes it, but sometimes when you double click on the puff, it won't show in the package info here, and you'll have to hit select and select the puff again. Just be aware of that. Uh, it may happen. Now, since we aren't Crestron, we can't sign the puff, uh, so you'll have to hit recheck here to actually perform the check. And this is going to connect to the DIN AP3. Uh, here's the default login banner for a processor with fairly recent firmware that uh, does not have authentication turned on, you will get this banner. So now the Puff's going to perform its checks. It's going to check to see what version of Showrunner is on there. And if it's uh, newer, it's going to prompt you to upload the files. So this takes a, a minute here to perform. This puff uh, contains also the TSW760 file. In this case, we're connected to a DIN AP3, so it's going to give us the option to load Showrunner, update the X panel, and load the Crestron app. We're going to go ahead and hit the Update button to load all files. This is going to transfer the Showrunner main program. Now the program is being loaded by the processor, so the Puff tool is going to wait for that to start. Now that the program is loaded, it's going to transfer the X panel and Crestron app files. First up is the X panel. Now it's going to transfer the Crestron app, which is for an iPad. All 
All right, we've successfully loaded Showrunner to the Crestron Den AP3 processor. Now we're going to go ahead and navigate to the web page of the processor. You could have loaded the puff via USB, but we do need the web server to be able to load uh, the actual config file and license. So we're going to navigate to the IP address of the processor. In this case, this is 10.44.5.80, and then it's slash CWS slash showrunner slash main. Hit enter. This is going to bring up the showrunner reports and management tool. And right now we have no configuration loaded and, and this is not licensed. We're going to go to file management. We're going to uncheck the restart after transfer. And we're going to go browse. We'll go to the desktop here. And we'll go into our folder where we extracted the files from the file site. Inside the MVRAM folder is a license. We're going to upload the license. So the new license has been loaded to the processor successfully. We need to restart to load it. But first, we're then going to load the config that was provided. Now the configuration is automatically going to force a restart. So we're going to go ahead and hit upload. Now this will transfer the file over, verify it, and then restart the program. All right, new configuration file has been uploaded. Now, if you had an existing file, the old file uh, would be listed here, but uh, since we don't, there's no existing config, this is a brand new processor. This will restart, it takes about 45 seconds. So if we go back to the main page here, you'll get a server encountered an error as the program restarts. You can check this. Uh, a few times to see that it has been loaded. Um, just be patient here. There it is. So the processor has been successfully loaded. Um, if we want, we can back up the current config by hitting download. Um, this hasn't been fully loaded yet, but we can see it's licensed and the config has not been loaded. There we go. Now that the config is loaded, we can download it, and it'll prompt you to save it so you can back your config up once you're done with your job site. And we can also see our license status, and we can see that it's licensed, standard license, it's been successfully licensed. Uh, if you're issued a trial license, the expiration date will show up here. The hardware ID needs to match the MAC address and number of loads and various information for the license is presented here. This concludes the uh, loading of Showrunner to the processor. Now we'll show you how to load the files to the touch panel. So to load Showrunner to the touch panel, we'll click on the pencil for the puff tool here. We'll put in the IP address of the touch panel. In this case, this is 10.44.5.53. And then we'll have to hit recheck here. Now we can see our TSW760. And we'll go ahead and hit update after checking it. And that will load the uh, files. Now the IP ID still needs to be set up on the TSW760. Uh, the easiest thing to do is just to set that up per the information provided. Uh, uh, with the files, and that IP ID will point back to the DIN AP3. We can look in our device status here to see the uh, IP IDs that are used by the TSW760s. So their IP IDs 10 and 11 are available in the default program. Uh, if you have more, they will be assigned in the configuration and labeled accordingly. And the touch panel will go ahead and load that in the background. Uh, it'll come online, assuming the IP table is set up and the network connectivity to the processor is good. And that concludes the loading of Shore.